Good morning all. A few days ago I thought I'd dig out this. This is uh, my wearable data display. This is a project um, which I haven't worked on for quite a while, possibly even as much as a year. Now this uh, OLED display you can see is uh, strobing rather badly, so in fact I'm going to just close the blinds so that it's much darker in here and that um, stops the interaction or lessens it, uh, the interaction with the camera. So what this unit is, is an OLED display. Uh, this is the larger of the two types that are commonly available. This is the 1.3 inch. And it has lots and lots of numerical data on it, live uh, updating numerical data, which is coming from another Arduino. It's being transmitted by that other Arduino and received by this uh, RF24 receiver, digital 2.4 gig receiver. The Arduino is then uh, formatting it and laying it out on the OLED display. Now these six fields here on the left, labelled A0 to A5, are simply the uh, analog values coming from the uh, pins on the other Arduino. So they're all sort of just floating, but analog values, because they're floating, change and I thought that would make an interesting live updated display. Now if I just touch my finger on the analog pins on the transmitter you can see how that affects the numbers. Some go really high, some have gone up to 1, 2, 3 and some go really low. Uh, this one here, int2, I think is the millis count from the transmitter. So you can see that this is, uh, well it's currently going down because it's rolled over. So that's changing 23, 22, 21, uh, every one second. This is a binary value just indicating whether transmissions have been successful. This is a locally produced variable that's simply counting the number of data packets that have been received. Now a data packet includes uh, several integers. Uh, the packet size I think is 32 bytes so that you could have 16 integers, so six of them are used here and a couple more here. Uh, so that's a packet count. And then there are two more fields down here and these are locally generated and they're generated actually by a chip which is sitting on a board that's sandwiched in this uh, set of boards at the back here. And that is a LiPo fuel gauge chip which is uh, measuring the uh, battery voltage, 3.97 volts currently, and calculating a state of charge 86.92%. Now I call this my wearable data display but to be honest that name is a little bit tongue-in-cheek because it's never going to be actually wearable. It simply really means that it's uh, small, self-contained, self-powered. It has its own LiPo battery there. In fact if we look, if we look at that, that is a uh, 3.7 volts obviously. 150 milliamp hour, so it's a relatively small uh, LiPo cell. So it's probably more sense to call it portable rather than wearable. I mean it could be made uh, wearable but probably all the components would have to be put on a single circuit board and not this sort of multi-board arrangement with bits sandwiched together and dangling down underneath the Arduino Pro Mini there. So this is the uh, data receiver and display device. Now let's a, take a look at the transmitter that's actually sending all this data over to the receiver. And the transmitter is this. Um, it's an Arduino Uno with a board plugged into it, just one of these uh, green prototyping boards, some wires on the back to link the OLED display. Uh, this is another similar OLED, but this one is the 0.96 inch uh, variety and of course another RF24 transceiver this one just happens to be plugged into one of these little um, power and connector boards because it makes hooking up the wires on the back a little bit simpler but there's the transmitter and receiver pair of units now if I just do that thing again where I touch the analog pins and I'm going to try and touch them with uh, ground so the first few should go low voltage. Oh, they haven't. They've gone high. I'm not, oh, they've got, that's quite difficult to influence the analog pins. But it's these six pins here. And this is showing you the um, digital value coming from them from 0 to 1023. Let's try and bridge across that again. 
I mean, you can see I'm having an impact on those pins, changing those values. If I let go, they'll kind of float back up. I'm not quite sure why A4 hasn't started to float back up, but uh, never mind that. Now I call this one the transmitter and this the receiver because this is in transmit mode permanently, sending all these packets of data to the receiver. But actually some data does go back the other way because this is a digital data transmission system and there's an acknowledge packet. So when this uh, transmitter sends a packet, it waits for the receiver to send an acknowledgement packet back. And one of the things you can do on this NRF uh, 24LO1 Plus system is that you can send back with the acknowledge packet more data. So in fact, what the receiver is sending back is the state of charge of the LiPo, 86.34%. That's interesting. This says 86.49. I have been having a bit of trouble with this. Let's try resetting that. Now it's 86.34%. I'm not quite sure about this uh, Arduino Uno. I might change it. It does seem to be a little bit flaky. But uh, yeah, certainly that data, the uh, LiPo percentage, which is a locally generated value on this board, is being sent back in the acknowledgement packets. Now, getting this system back up and running again hasn't been entirely plain sailing. This one's not been too bad because, because all these modules are soldered together. I wasn't tempted to borrow the Pro Mini and use it for something else. So this still had the original code in it, and that all worked. The only thing I was a bit um, concerned about was whether the battery would still be okay, but it is because there are lithium cell protection components uh, on boards underneath here. I'll show how this is constructed in a moment, all the various parts. But I had real problems with this. Because this is uh, all plugged in, this has been taken apart numerous times, the UNO used for some other project, and uh, so of course it lost, it lost its program. And when I came to recompile the code for the transmitter, I was getting all manner of errors on the Arduino IDE. Uh, one of the problems was that I couldn't compile the, or I was getting errors during compilation for the Adafruit uh, OLED display library. Now you can see on the receiver, if I press uh, reset, if I can do that, that that has the Adafruit splash screen. So this is still using the Adafruit uh, OLED display library. This one I've now upgraded to U8Glib and that caused all manner of problems of its own. Now I'm just going to link uh, analog inputs A0 and A1 with this uh, pair of wires here, like that to uh, VCC and ground, where are they? Five volts and ground are there. And that should show up immediately as, uh, well, A0 green is going to ground, so that's gone to zero. Uh, A1 yellow I've put to VCC, so that's immediately gone to 1023. So you can see how um, the uh, analog value on these analog inputs is being turned obviously into a digital value transmitted over the 2.4 gig wireless system and then put on the display by the receiver unit. So let's take a look in a little more detail at what actually is in this receiver unit. Um, you can see in the middle here is an Arduino Pro Mini. Now this is a 3.3 volt unit because it's having to run off the 3.7 volts of the LiPo. So there's the uh, Arduino 3.3 volt Pro Mini. Uh, obviously then there is an OLED display. As I say, this is a 1.3 inch OLED display, uh, very much like that one. At the top is the NRF uh, 24LO1 plus data transceiver. So that's one of these units. I'll turn it upside down so that it's pointing the right way. Now underneath the board, there are a couple of modules. Uh, this one is a TP4056 uh, LiPo charger board. It can charge the LiPo at up to one amp. Obviously, I don't want that with a very small LiPo, so I've put a different resistor. I think you have to take off one of these resistors. Uh, I've soldered on a, a through-hole resistor, which I'll just see if I can see that. Where's that resistor? Yes, there it is there. Um, it's a 10K through-hole resistor, full size, which I've soldered onto the board. Uh, okay, carrying on. 
what I felt was very important with a unit uh, that has a relatively small battery is to know at all times what the um, LiPo state of charge is so that you can see how much longer you've got uh, to run the unit. And so I also incorporated um, one of these Max 17043 LiPo fuel gauges. This is an incredibly clever chip that from battery voltage information and historical voltage information can give a very accurate state of charge. So uh, that unit has gone in. This is an I squared C uh, device. And of course, then there's the LiPo itself, which is this little 150 milliamp hour uh, battery, which came from Banggood. So these are all very easily obtainable um, and relatively low cost components. I think the OLED is probably the most expensive part. I was very keen to just use parts that can be easily obtained on eBay or Banggood or something like that. And uh, of course, the other thing, I was very keen to attach them together in such a way that I had the fewest number of wires. So you can see that uh, the OLED is pretty much attached directly to this side of the Pro Mini. The data transceiver is pretty much attached directly to that side. Now there were a few fudges because uh, inevitably pin assignments won't line up exactly where you want them to line up. But uh, generally speaking, it worked reasonably well. And I have to say, this is where I had the most fun building this. It was in trying to work out the topology of getting these parts to uh, sit together like this. This wireless charging pad, um, you can see the um, loops of wire in there, inductive charging, uh, QI standard or QI as you have to call it. This was a later addition uh, because it just was convenient to um, charge this wirelessly. I don't have to fiddle about plugging a USB in there, but of course it's just as easy to do that. Uh, this just produces five volts and ground. That's rebooted for some reason. I've got a feeling this plugs a bit loose actually. This is the output from the power block. This part here is the um, TP4056 charger board on the bottom there and the uh, LiPo fuel gauge there. And it's just sort of the power section uh, charging the LiPo, which is there. Uh, I've got a feeling there's a loose connection there or something. Uh, here's a better view of the power section. This is the TP4056 charger board with cell protection components. It's important to get that one uh, if the cell is hasn't got its own cell protection. There's some sticky gunk on the back because I think I had the LiPo on the back of here at one time. Uh, sandwich, oh, it's got its um, 10K resistor, which replaces the surface mount resistor, which comes on the board, but you have to desolder if you want to reduce the current down from nominal one amp to something lower. I can't quite remember what the current is set to. It might be around uh, 150 milliamps, I just can't remember. There's the LiPo fuel gauge, the red PCB, mounted directly back to back with the TP4056 board. I also put some uh, hot glue in there to kind of hold those two together. And those two are anchored down onto the Pro Mini through two um, pins, which are there because the I squared C S clock and S data just happen to line up exactly with A4 and A5, which are the uh, I squared C pins on the Pro Mini, so that it could be just connected directly through to there. So that is a data path, but also acting as a sort of mechanical anchorage. So now I've got to try and decide where next for this project. It was originally conceived as a remote uh, data display for voltage and current for one of my solar charge controller projects, the rather ill-fated MPPT or Muppet solar charge controller, which never seems to uh, get worked on because the weather's never good enough. But uh, this could also be used, I suppose, as a uh, cell voltage monitor for the eight cells in my, uh, the eight lithium ion phosphate cells, that is in my electric bike project. You could have the eight cell voltages come up here and then this could be just put on the handlebars of the bike and it would give you, this runs for approximately four hours on this little cell, but uh, that's a 150 milliamp hour. You could put in a, uh, I don't know, a 600 milliamp hour, which would fit behind this display quite neatly. I'll dig that out in a moment. And then this would run all day and provide uh, a display of those cell voltages. So this is a 600 milliamp hour uh, cell, which I also bought from Banggood. It's quite a bit thicker. 
it's certainly a lot larger. So this would run for four times the time. Now this one actually does have its own uh, cell protection board in there. So it could be used with the non-protected version of the TP4056, or I suppose you could have two sets of protection. Don't suppose that would um, be a problem, would it? Now, just a quick word about the OLEDs. You do have to be a little bit careful with the pin assignments on these, because these two OLEDs are both 1.3 inch, but they're very different in their connection. You can see that the one in the unit is VCC then ground. This one is ground then VCC, so it's completely the other way around. This one then goes clock mozzie, and this one goes D0, D1. Not quite sure what those are. There's an additional reset pin on this one, whereas this one doesn't have a reset pin. And then you've got chip select and data command, and this one has data command and chip, set, chip select. So uh, they are completely different. So that was a little uh, revisit of my uh, data display, my wearable data display project, which hasn't seen the light of day for a little while. Um, I had a number of problems getting the transmitter back working again, mainly just compilation problems trying to get the uh, software reloaded in here. So I will make a video uh, shortly about some of the problems I had getting uh, U8Glib, which is the uh, display library, to play nicely with RF24, which is the library for the data transceiver. But I'll do that another time. Cheerio.